Hello, and thanks for taking a few minutes to listen to this uh, brief update on what's new in the latest release of the Systems Toolkit. My name is Washington Wedderburn, and I am the SDK Product Manager. And I will be highlighting for you some of the bigger ticket items that you'll see in this latest release of SDK. Uh, the first uh, feature that I'd like to highlight for you is our support for rendezvous proximity operations. And while this isn't actually a new capability, it does represent a simplification of the use of SDK Astrogator in solving uh, RPO um, issues. Uh, there are many real-world applications of RPOs. Uh, if you see any uh, docking that occurs with the space station or uh, concepts for on-orbit inspections or even debris removal, those are all examples of RPOs. And uh, historically, in order to take advantage of SDK's ability to model those scenarios, uh, you would require a pretty thorough understanding of the relevant orbital mechanics involved. Uh, you'd have to be a pretty experienced user of our SDK Astrogator uh, features. Um, and you'll have to be pretty well versed in some of the numerical issues uh, surrounding the differential corrector when trying to employ uh, the mission control sequence in order to execute some of these maneuvers. Uh, what we've done with SDK 12.2 is we've included a huge collection of uh, pre-configured RPO mission control sequences that are readily usable right out of the gate. Uh, user only has to load those in depending on the particular application they have in mind and then configure them or customize them to meet their specific mission needs. And all those uh, Examples are, again, fully customizable and are completely documented inside the SDK help. Uh, the next feature I'd like to highlight is uh, support for laser communications. Uh, if you've used the COM capabilities of SDK in the past, you're uh, familiar with the already existing laser comms features. Um, however, uh, as the prevalence of laser communications in other uses other than intersatellite links um, becomes more and more um, prevalent in the industry. Um, there are definitely more applications now uh, that benefit from being able to use LaserCom because of the high data rates, the increased security that comes with uh, using uh, laser links. Um, however, there are some uh, mitigating circumstances that, that uh, tend to make it a little bit more difficult for, um, for some of those use cases. And primarily, they have to do with the atmospheric attenuation uh, that occurs uh, when using laser links within the atmosphere. Um, we've always had support for using uh, the Beer-Lambert laws uh, as a way of accounting for that attenuation. However, it requires uh, users be knowledgeable of very specific uh, extension co coefficients and the medium in which the transmitters and receivers are operating in order to take advantage of that capability. With 12.2, we've added a feature that has actually been part of our SDK EOIR capability for some time, and that is the ability to take advantage of a ModTran-based atmosphere model uh, that allows for the propagation losses to be inherently accounted for as part of your analysis without requiring any special knowledge uh, as what's required with the Beer-Lambert laws. Additionally, in 12.2, uh, we've added an additional ability to define uh, link routes uh, through a constellation um, based on RF properties. Uh, typically, at the start of a design process, you may only be interested in routing behavior that's dictated by geometric constraints, for instance, minimum range or maximum elevation. Uh, as you move further along into the design cycle, uh, you may want to apply 
more realistic or real world constraints to the selection criteria for uh, routing through a constellation. To that end, we've added the ability to now use uh, maximum received isotropic power or maximum carrier to noise ratio as the defining criteria for routing through any particular constellation. Uh, the next feature I'd like to highlight is a continuation of a 12.1 feature, and that is our Python integration within SDK. Um, as Python continues to grow as the integration language of choice uh, amongst engineers, and as we continue to expand SDK's footprint into the digital engineering ecosystem, the need to integrate SDK uh, with other tools becomes more and more of a requirement and, and not necessarily just a nice to have. Uh, to that end, we've continued to expand the features available uh, through our Python interface. So now you're able to access SDK events as well as globe and map controls. And additionally, we've included Jupyter Notebook as a standard item in the SDK install, which now allows for easier SDK automation from within the SDK desktop interface. One of the additional benefits of SDK is its ability to take high fidelity analysis and convert it to high quality video output for easy consumption. Uh, to that end, in this release, we've added two new codecs, uh, as well as adding the ability to parallelize uh, the making of movies. Uh, there's actually a separate video that covers this topic in a little more detail. Uh, please feel free to check that out at your leisure if you want some more details. And the last feature I'll highlight is uh, actually a feature that's being released in beta currently. Um, and it's the ability to deal with uh, large quantities of objects within an SDK scenario. Uh, the continuing emergence of mega constellations creates some new analysis challenges uh, that weren't necessarily as prevalent before. The ability to work with scenarios containing hundreds or even thousands of objects is paramount in predicting the behavior of these systems before they're actually deployed. As the first step in mitigating the complexities associated with working with that many objects in a single SDK scenario, SDK 12.2 has introduced the concept of a satellite collection object. A satellite collection object essentially allows you to treat thousands of objects as a single entity within the SDK user interface. That then allows a satellite collection object to become a individual entity that can be applied in coverage analysis, in conjunction analysis, deck access, et cetera. In the future, SDK will provide additional collections that will allow thousands of non-homogeneous objects to be treated as a single entity within SDK. As this feature is currently only released in beta, if you are interested in actually evaluating this capability, you should reach out to our support team. They'll be glad to provide you with the needed licenses. So that was a quick rundown of some of the newest features available in SDK 12.2. For more details on some of the other changes available, check out the release notes available at help.agi.com and feel free to download the latest version of SDK from the link uh, posted below. Thanks for listening, until next time.